Okay, I'm just gonna dive right into good habits to form while using Peel Solver. So the first thing you need to do when you have Peel Solver is set up all of your basic ranges. As you can see, I've taken the time to do a lot of this. Um, if you have GTO preflop ranges and cloud solutions, you should just go ahead and just put in what you think are going to be GTO strategies. Obviously, uh, outside of playing with a chart online, uh, many of these are going to be too complicated to initially use until you have taken the long, long effort to be able to memorize them. But for the most part, you should just be going through and putting in reasonable ranges for what you think you should be opening so you can just have a handy list of ranges to use to then go up and set up scenarios. Something that is important when you are doing these modelings is to use the weight feature, which is located in this upper right hand corner. So notice that when I have a three betting strategy, I mean, this is obviously GTO, so it's going to be mixing, but notice that I'm not doing any one action 100% of the time with a lot of these fringe hands, right? Kings, queens, aces are just going to be three bets. Um, also notice that when I call, Right, like these calls are going to be mixed. And so similarly, when you are modeling, say, a limper, right, you should be having some hands that are going to be mixed because those are going to be hands that your opponent might either raise preflop and not have in their limping range, or they might limp fold preflop, right? Uh, so a hand like maybe, let's say, 8-5 suited is a hand where a limper might limp but not always call a raise, depending on the exact dynamics, right? So this could be something that we might be able to have as like a 0.25 or a 0.5 and that would be pretty reasonable, okay? Once you have all of these kind of initial uh, preflop ranges set up, what you're going to do is you're going to go into common spots. And so once you have a complete model set up, you can just go ahead, put it in save current parameters and save what you want to be doing there. So that's just going to be pretty easy. Let's go ahead and create a quick scenario. So let's say we RFI the button in full ring, in position. Out of position, our opponent calls, what? Nope, it calls versus a 50. Right, so this is a GTO call. And then let's just pick an arbitrary board. And let's say on this board, we want to see if it is good to one third deep hole C bet. So the starting pot, if we raise, is going to be like 6.5 big blinds. Right? Uh, can't do this, so we'll do 65. And then we'll set this to uh, 970. That seems right. In position on the flop, we're going to be wanting to see if our deep pull is good. And we'll set the raise size to about 50, which seems to be the percentage of the pot, which gets to be about a 3x. not going to have a bet size. Oh, when you don't want your opponent to have a bet size or a bet, you should just leave this uh, empty rather than zero. If you set it to zero, it will just min bet. Uh, here, for simplicity's sake, one sixty-six comma 133. So a comma is how you're going to separate the bet sizes. And then also, if I have two, if I have all of the in position stats filled in, I can just copy it into the out of position bar, which is actually going to make it uh, easier if you do it correctly and fill in all of these other boxes rather than being an idiot like me. Do -do -do. Let's just say he has a donking range. Um, even though I'm giving a donking range to villains, very often you'll find that P.O. just never wants to donk. Okay, so once we have these kind of bet sizes in, you can kind of ignore all of these other settings until we get to force out of position bet or force out of position check and in position bet. So basically, if you want to deep hole while you're out of position, you should use this bu this button. If you want to deep hole when you're in position, you should use this one. So I'm gonna run this quick sim. So first you hit build tree, and then you hit go. And then this is going to solve down to a level of, of unexploitability that I have gone ahead and set here. We're gonna go ahead, ahead and look in the browser and we can see after a check, then there's a bet and then there is a list of hands and strategies. Okay. Once this is solved down, and we'll just stop it now, so for the purpose of uh, brevity of the video, we'll have the EVs out of position and in position. 
of each player, which you can discover by pressing this. And then you can also explore each player's ranges through this visualization in the range explorer, which is actually just really useful to see. So for example, here, this player is always going to bet their combo draws. They're always going to, they're probably not going to call many of their combo draws. I'm sorry, I'm sorry they're going to raise with their combo draws, never call their combo draws, and never going to fold those combo draws, which is also going to make a lot of sense. Similarly, they're going to raise three combos of sets, never call the sets, and never fold the sets. So, you know, for the obvious, obvious things, you can just check and verify that, you know, uh, PO is playing categories of hands in similar ways. Okay, that's just an important thing to do is that because these strategies are just way too complex, if you look at individual hand combinations, what you have to do is you have to humanize this in a way that you could recognize over the table. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's say we reach the river through a check check line. And then the river is, uh, let's say, let's not. Okay, here we go. Our opponent checks there. Even though this is not completely solved down, normally what we can see here. So on the river, when we have nothing, we bet 23 combos and we check 14, which is which actually is going to be close to what is acceptable. Here, king high, we bet 13 and we check 17. I bet as this solves down, you'll actually see king high be closer to like five or six, and then there's going to be a lot more checks. But then you also notice here, for when we have ace high, we have three combos. And then we should just be checking back all of our ace high, our low pairs, and our third pair. So this just makes a lot of sense. Our checking range should be all of these kind of low showdown hands, and we should be betting all of our stronger value hands and then some of our bluffs. So, uh, do, do, do. when we bet here, our opponent's going to fold uh, after this solves down to be about 40% of the time. In actual play, you'll find that people fold much closer to 55% of the time. Some huge, huge amount they are overfolding here. And so what does that mean on a queen, seven, four, six board? That probably means that they are uh, folding their sixes 100% of the time, right? Uh, that probably means they're folding their fours 100% of the time. I think these are all little fours. And then all of these kind of like almost calls probably are just going to be all like always folds like ace eight on the river is never going to call okay and so now when you have your opponent over folding actually we should be giving him a couple more folds here okay yeah so now that our opponent over folds we're going to lock all hands set strategy and close and let's go back to the tree and we're going to hit go and we're going to let it solve here. We didn't let it solve down completely the first time so this might take a little longer than usual. But now that we have this locked strategy, when we go back here and see what does Pio want to do, we're seeing that the frequency that we should be betting is going to be increasing. And I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead because I know what the conclusion is going to be is that here, now, in our checking range, nothing never checks. King highs never check. Instead, we should be betting all of our air, we should be betting all of our king high, and we should even be betting some of our ace high, which has showdown value, okay? So, Pio shows a direct human exploit against, uh, you know, like a weaker player, is that if you know that your opponent is obviously overfolding in a spot by 10%, rather than try to check down bluffs and have some kind of, like, balanced give up range, you should just be betting all of your bluffs. Rather than checking back your king high and trying to realize what the, like, the 2% uh, showdown equity, or I'm sorry, not equity, but uh, the 2% the that you're going to win on the showdown, um, is that the same thing? I don't even know. You should be betting king high and, ace, and even ace high uh, uh, in this kind of spot. So uh, 
I hope that this gives you a couple examples of how you should be using PO node locking, how you should be looking at categories of hands by range explorer, and how once you have a little bit of population data, you can immediately see, make a huge deviation from what is quote unquote optimal, uh, but still following PO's instructions, find an exploitable, uh, an exploitable strategy against your opponent, which is in turn unexploitable yourself, which is kind of the holy grail in poker. Good luck, guys.